Chud. That's what I did this weekend. Chud. Uh, it wasn't until maybe five years ago I knew what Chud meant. Um, and I don't know if this is a term it used in the comic world or not, but Chud. I took it as an insult at one point. I was like, why would we call it Chud? Uh, but it's comics here under a dollar. Um, it was originally comics hundreds under a dollar. Uh, but this year, uh, the Chud show was defined as comics here under a dollar. So I went to the Chud show in, uh, uh, up in uh, Maryland, actually, outside of D.C., um, and ended up picking up a bunch of comics. Uh, this many, exactly. Uh, and they're a dollar and 50 cents each. Um, I know Rag718 was there. I didn't see him. Um, he s was talking like he knew I was there and, and maybe he was stalking me. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, he's like, you left already. I, I spent two and a half hours. And at that point I was done. I was hungry. I just needed to leave. Um, and there were too many boxes. Um, and frankly, I was a little discouraged. So when I got there, it's in a small hotel meeting room. Uh, and there's probably 15 or less vendors. Um, and so there's a center ring of, of people and then they're on the perimeter as well with their booths. Um, there were really no wall books uh, and nothing was over a dollar. Like there wasn't anything else they were charging for that I saw at least. So I'm second in line and I'm only second because I went to the bathroom before I got in line. So someone beat me to there by a second, which is whatever. Um, but I'm, but what happens at these shows, and maybe you all realize this or not, but what happens is the dealers all prey on each other. And actually the term I've heard used by other dealers, I've heard it, um, is all oh, the vultures got all the stuff. And so the vultures, meaning the other dealers, are in there before the show opens at 10 o'clock and they're going through every box and they're pulling buckets of books, which means they are getting all the deals and they're not even gonna resell those for the same price, obviously. They're going to uh, mark those up or sell them on eBay or take them to their store. They're being good business people, but it screws everyone else in line. So uh, a little disheartened by that. I really wish that wasn't the case. Um, Years ago, I, I went to a comic show and I sold, a, a, I had a table just to get rid of a lot of dollar books. And I sold a lot. I actually sold everything but one box. But literally, as soon as I put a box up on my table to get my table ready, they had descended on me. And they were, they knew I was fresh meat. They knew they hadn't gone through my boxes and they wanted to get in those boxes before anyone else did. So um, I made half if not more of my money that day before the show even opened because they bought so much. Um, and so be it, that's fine. They, they can make a profit on it, great. Uh, it helped me out. But as a buyer, you're sitting there hoping you can find some good deals and it's getting picked over. So these are the books that I found even though I felt it was picked over. And I really did feel it was picked over. There, was, there wasn't a whole lot that I saw worth my time. So uh, some of these are, are books that I've just been looking for. I've been hunting newsstand books. So there's a bunch of newsstand books in here. And it's like just one way for, to, for me to reinvigorate my collecting uh, for books that I love. And if, you know, for instance, Uncanny X-Men 281, I bought this for a dollar. I have this, I have several copies, but it's the newsstand. And it wasn't even bagged. Uh, so one day I'd like to meet Wills Portacio and have him sign this. This is a really great conditioned copy of it. It's 9.6, if not 9.8. There is one spine crease I see. So um, it's just a book I love. It's one of the first books I read as an X-Men collector. So I got it for a buck as a newsstand. Why not? So um, I picked, uh, I'm just gonna go through these. So I, I picked Incredible Hulk up, number 12. I thought this one was worth something. It's not this one, it's a different one, um, but it's a Wolverine battle with the Hulk. So I might just uh, end up giving that away at some point. Um, I got the set, a dollar each, the Alias Purple set. This I paid a lot of money for back in the day when right around Alias and was interested in learning. So Alias 26, or 24, I'm sorry. 
25, 26, right? Yep. 27 and 28. Um, I have another set of this already that I'm uh, trying to sell on eBay shortly. Um, and um, yeah, it, for a dollar, why not? Uh, I hadn't ever found this in a newsstand. X-Factor Annual 7, Joe Casada cover, newsstand edition. Really solid copy, great spine, not discolored, not bent up. Cool mojo centered story. This is my own little spec. Astonishing Wolfman 11 with Invincible. I had collected the whole run of this years ago, and I've since sold it. But I saw this in there, and I was like, you know, maybe this this is a harder issue to find. This was a harder one to find when I was getting the run. And maybe if Invincible gets made into that cartoon or whatever it is being made into on Amazon, this might be a hard tie-in uh, to find. So I picked this one up. There's been a lot of buzz on Daredevil, so I picked this Daredevil one up. Uh, I don't think this is the one that's fetching any money, but I picked it up anyway. Uh, and just as a precaution, I picked up uh, and brought these back into the collection. Old Man Logan number one, the miniseries for Secret Wars. Is that this one? Yeah. And then the uh, ongoing series. I love the Andrea Sorrentino covers. Um, I like the concept. Uh, so I got that. Picked up another copy of the Secret Wars Battle World number three. This is the prototype of uh, Weapon Hulk, or what is it called? Yeah, Weapon H, Weapon H. Picked that up for a buck. Also at the same booth, I picked up Totally Awesome Hulk number one. So uh, so yeah, there's that. Um, these two I might sell as a set, because, or I might hold on to these until I see what my other ones are. So I love these covers. These are... Jim Lee, both of them are Jim Lee covers. I might have him autograph these at uh, Baltimore Comic Con he's gonna be at. Um, I love these covers. These are sweet cover, Ghost Rider covers, and they're newsstands. Uh, and I have a set of these already. I'm gonna see which one's better and maybe get them autographed in CGC because it's super sweet Jim Lee art, at least on the cover. I don't think he did the interiors. Um, X-Men 22 newsstand, just a cool Psylocke, Silver Samurai, Kowanen, I think was her name, uh, her clone or her original body. Uh, there's that weird storyline. Bought another copy of X-Men 6 newsstand. I'll pick them up if they're cheap and if they're uh, good condition. Picked up newsstand of uh, the Executioner song. I'm trying to get the whole run. I haven't been tallying which, which, uh, versions or which uh, which parts of the storyline I have. So I probably have doubles in a bunch of these, but hey, uh, pick this one up. Uh, this was maybe 50 cents. Uh, Fantastic Four, uh, 286, really solid copy, Return of Jean Grey. Uh, this was my first, um, this was actually one of my first entrees to, to X-Men. I bought this at like a family dollar with my grandpa. So, um, I think I didn't quite know the X-Men. I never had a chance to buy the X-Men, but this was on the shelf. All these Fantastic Four were there, so I picked them up. Um, for a buck, new X-Men number 114. This is the Grant Morrison run. Uh, Frank Quitely. Uh, love this run, love this book. This is the book that got me back into the X-Men. I bought it at a Topps supermarket, uh, and I still have that one, but... Uh, and that's probably a newsstand, right? Uh, I should double check, but this is the direct edition. So another copy of this. And another Executioner song, newsstand. Bagged and everything. And this one too. X-Men number 14, early Andy Kubert. Andy Kubert, yep. Uh, two copies back to back, really nice copies of this. X-Men 8, cool silver cover with Gambit. Um, I have another one of these, so again, it's sort of like, let's look and see which is the better one. Maybe I'll have Jim Lee sign it. Uh, just for giggles, Superman 500, first appearance of Cyborg and Steel and Superboy and the Eradicator uh, in a different form. So I picked, brought this back into the collection. I found this. Um, I need to do some research. Uh, looks like it's got somewhere on it, but Brute Force number one. Uh, there's a lot of speculation around this for some reason, probably a stupid reason. I don't know, uh, but I saw it in the threshold risk is 
the risk threshold is very low here. For a dollar, uh, for this book, why not? At that same booth, and that was the first booth I went to, and it seemed my strategy, jumping back to my rant in the beginning, my strategy was to find a booth that maybe I'd never been to before, a dealer I'd never been to, but it looked like they might not have picked over his stuff. Um, so that might have worked out. I also found this. First appearance of Lady Deathstrike, Alpha Flight 33. Uh, probably a five, ten dollar book on a good day, uh, but cool Magnolia cover. Uh, just uh, another great book to have. Also, Deathmate Black. Uh, so that's a cool cover. I love this cover as well. That's a Sylvester and Jim Lee cover. Hey, that, that'd be cool to have both their signatures on. It's a pretty easy 9-8, I would think. And then the last book in the chud, um, I need to do some research on this, is John Burns' 2112. So this is a tie-in to the Next Men run, this first Next Men run. This is a different color logo though, so it's not the first print. Um, so I bought this for a dollar. I need to look it up. I'm thinking it's probably a low print run. Uh, it has some wear because someone read it, so you can see in the, the tight binding, the square binding, that there's a little um, discoloration. You know, as you open things that are tightly bound, they kind of flake off. But it's sort of the origin of the villain that's in Next Men, uh, with an N, Next. Uh, so, it's a cool storyline. I remember from reading it years and years ago. Um, I'll probably flip through this one. Uh, so it's loosely tied to John Burns' universe in the Dark Horse comics. So I picked that up. So that was Chud. I have two more books to show you. Um, and these are books that the day before, so Chud was Sunday. On a Saturday, I went to a flea market. Or, I'm sorry, not a flea market. I went to a garage sale. Uh, and someone got there before me. Uh, I had taken a, a quick detour to get some cash, and so someone got there before me and uh, was in the box before me, and there's just one box. Uh, it said comics, so anytime there's comics nearby, I'll try to go. So he had some stuff, but nothing I, like the second Nebula, maybe. Uh, I couldn't tell what else he had, but I did pick up What If Avengers 32, the Korvac one, there's a bunch of these, and I don't know, this is maybe more spec, maybe this ties into uh, if Korvac becomes something in the um, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, you've seen one of my early, my recent haul videos, I did a Korvac first appearance in Defenders Annual. Uh, so the What If annual Avengers had become pawns of Korvac. So again, these were a buck as well. So I just picked up one. Why not? Uh, if I don't like it, I can just give it away. Uh, and then the other one that I was excited about, and I picked it up really quickly, and this is the beauty of Instagram, is Thor, God of Thunder 25. And this is the first, um, one of the first disputed cameos of um, Jane Foster as uh, Thor. And this is in really decent condition. This is a Simon Bisley variant cover. Uh, that they had, and I haven't even opened this to see where the cameo is, but it, I would assume it's towards the end. Um, let me, oh yes. So, oh wait, maybe not. Um, it shows Thor not being able to pick up his hammer. Um, I'd have to like sit here. Oh, here we go. She's on a centerfold right in there. Um, I just sold my run. No one wanted to buy the run like a week ago and now they wanted to buy it. So I just sold my whole run of the Thor um, uh, Dauterman uh, run from 2014 onward, but I um, need to finance everything else. So uh, Thor, God of Thunder 25. I can't tell if I'm going to hold on to this or, or sell. Um, anyway, what do y'all think? What was the win for the Chud run? Uh, any of those books stand out to you? Any diamonds in the rough? Anything that um, really fetches a pretty penny or that you were just like, I can't believe you found that? Uh, it was like mad dash. It was, it was like diving in, fingers moving quickly, uh, trying not to linger in places that were not gonna be fruitful. 
Um, so it was just, it was a crazy day, a crazy two and a half hours. So I was, I was tired afterwards, but, um, I think I got to all the booths that I wanted to get to. Some I just couldn't even get into because there were so many people. Um, but everyone's looking for a deal. So why not? Uh, so that's the Chud Run. So hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, again, let me know what you thought. And uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Uh, comment below. And uh, we'll have you along for the ride. So thanks, everyone. All right, bye-bye.